Tonight, the execution of a Texas inmate delayed following outcry from lawmakers and activists. Somerset ISD is getting some security upgrades. We're looking at how much these upgrades will cost property owners. And warmer temperatures and finally some sun today in our area. Adam Kasky will have a look at your weekend forecast in just a few minutes. Thanks for joining us for the news at nine. I'm Myra Arthur. A state appeals court has blocked the execution of Rodney Reed. That's after appeals from activists, celebrities and lawmakers on both sides of the aisle. A lower court will now consider Reed's claims that there was false testimony given during his trial. He was sentenced to be put to death for the 1996 death by rape and strangulation of a young woman in Bastrop. Reed's execution was scheduled to take place next Wednesday. His attorneys now say there was new evidence in this case that would exonerate Reed and actually implicate the victim's fiance at the time, who was a police officer. Prosecutors, however, maintain that Reed is guilty and say the DNA evidence rather proves that. Back here at home, Somerset ISD is getting security upgrades and a brand new building. It's all part of a $20 million bond project, but it wasn't easy to get voters approval. Petty Santos breaks down what that money will go towards and how much it will actually cost taxpayers. 85% of our students are economically uh, disadvantaged, which means that they come uh, from homes of poverty. Passing a $20 million bond in Somerset where home property values are the lowest in Bear County was a challenge, says Superintendent Salt Eno Joseph. Our voters, though, you know, came to the polls and said, hey, security is important. $3 million of the approved bond will go towards installing new security cameras and updating the existing ones. It will add fencing and strengthen security at every school entrance. We want to have uh, buzz-in doors or a buzz-in system where uh, we can uh, decide uh, who comes in and who comes out. We send our kids to school and we want them to be safe and so I guess security in any form is, is a good thing. Here's the increase voters in the district, which extends into Atascosa County, approved this past election. Property taxes will increase by four cents per $100 in value the first year, 16 more cents the second. The rate would decrease by 15 cents for the remaining years. The district says the majority of the money, or about $17 million, will go towards building the new Fine Arts Center, which will be built right here in the old baseball field right next to the high school. We have a, a bunch of talented students in our district and we're really proud of them and uh, it's well deserved that they're going to have a facility to showcase their talents. And because the district is considered a property poor district, taxpayers will only foot the bill for about 35 percent of the 20 million dollars approved, leaving the state to pay for the rest. It will lessen the uh, uh, the burden as far as taxes are concerned. And the superintendent says they are the only district in Bear County without a fine arts building. Once it's built by around 2022, it should be doubling their seating space venue to about 1000. Myra. All right, thanks, Patty. Back here at home, this was the scene earlier today near the San Antonio International Airport after a private jet crashed into a plane that was parked. This is aerial footage from Sky 12 showing a one twin jet plane essentially partially parked on top of the other. This happened around four o'clock this afternoon. Nobody was hurt. The situation did not impact any other commercial air traffic, but the crash did cause a 300 gallon fuel spill. The Federal Aviation Administration is looking into exactly what happened here. A man heads to trial next week for capital murder, but prosecutors are not seeking the maximum punishment. A teen with no limbs is wrestled to the ground by a deputy and a bank teller accused of invading a customer's home after that customer made a big withdrawal. Here's tonight's 9 at 9. California police still trying to figure out a motive after a school shooting that left two students dead. Police have searched the suspect's home, but still don't know why the teen allegedly walked onto campus on his 16th birthday, pulled the semi-automatic pistol from his backpack and began to fire. The attack lasted just 16 seconds and ended with the suspected gunman turned the gun on himself. The school and all others in the district were closed today and we're told all three survivors are recovering. One is already home from the hospital and the gunman remains in grave condition.
One of three local men charged in the death of a 20-year-old back in 2017 set to face trial on Monday. Charles Robnett was 18 at the time of the shooting death of Gary Barnhart. Sheriff's deputies say the shooting happened during a drug deal. Prosecutors are not seeking the death penalty. The co-defendants, Aguilar and Herrera, are also facing capital murder charges and the possibility of life in prison without the possibility of parole if they're convicted. An Arizona deputy is under fire after allegedly wrestling a teen with no arms or legs to the ground. This happened at a Tucson group home and was recorded by another teenager at that home. Both the teen recording the video and the one seen in the video were initially arrested and charged. Those charges have since been dropped and the sheriff's department is investigating the deputy involved. A Pennsylvania middle school teacher suspended after allegedly saying he wished he could shoot students for talking. A teacher that's working with children understands sometimes children can get out of hand. But you should never ever make any of that type of threats. A parent went to school administrators after her daughter came home with an audio recording of the alleged comments. The school district sent out a statement calling the teacher's judgment inappropriate and inexcusable. Here at home, well, less than a week after thousands of people attended the annual Worst Fest in New Braunfels, two fires spark hours apart, destroying the iconic Mark Plotz building. Yeah, the first fire happened yesterday evening, then around 6 this morning, a second flare up. It's at this point, kind of considered a total loss. Um, the worst hall itself, though, uh, see, is structurally intact at this point, and uh, all the firefighting efforts are to try and make sure that that remains the case. No one was hurt. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. Maryland police say a bank teller invaded the home of a customer who made a large withdrawal. In 34 years now doing law enforcement, uh, I, I can't think of another case before where it's almost like a reverse bank robbery. The suspect is accused of showing up at the 78 year old victim's home, forcing his way inside and assaulting that man. Another person inside the house was able to step in. The suspect ran off but was later arrested. A San Antonio family at odds with their homeowners association after the HOA told them they decorated too soon. The couple put up their holiday display the day after Halloween. The next day, they got a letter from their HOA demanding they take down the decorations until closer to the holiday. The couple says they aren't planning on doing that. We're definitely keeping up. We're not taking them down at all. A whale in Southern California spotted swimming beneath a group of surfers. A drone captured video of that massive mammal swimming just beneath the surface. A child prodigy from Belgium is on track to gain a bachelor's degree at nine years old. Lawrence Simmons is studying electrical engineering. Simmons plans to embark on a PhD program in electrical engineering while also studying for a medical degree when he graduates next month. To read more about these nine stories, go to ksat.com slash news at nine. It was definitely a little bit warmer today than the past couple of days, but look, we're still running well below average. I mean, the high today of 63 degrees, that's well below the average of 72, and even earlier this morning, 36, where the average is 50. However, temperatures will continually be on the rise over the next several days. High temperatures today, for the most part, low to mid 60s. The 53 you see here in Hondo, I think that's an, an erroneous reading and that's an error. And I do think tomorrow is going to be a few degrees warmer than what we had today. Very quiet weather all across Texas. Just some high thin clouds off to our west, and those will be moving in tomorrow. But nice upper level disturbance that's moving over the southeastern U.S. This is the same system that gave us that little bit of light rain over the past couple of days. Well, it's giving some good soaking rain to Georgia, South Carolina, and even into eastern North Carolina. It's being replaced by Big Blue H, upper level high, not the same kind of heat high that we get in the summertime around here that just moves in and sits overhead. Now, this will basically come and go, but temperatures will be warming up gradually over the next several days. So here's a look at that heat high or the upper level high slides to the southeast and actually there's a really good wound up upper level disturbance that's over the Baja Peninsula, but that's not going to be close enough to us to give us any rain chances through the weekend or even the early part of next week. I just think we'll get some high thin clouds from it on your Saturday. Sunday, the upper level flow comes in from the northwest, and I think that'll give us just a little extra cloud cover, but nothing major. Overall, a comfortable and fairly sunny weekend, but a bit of a chill in the air. 
Saturday morning. We're talking 35 here in San Antonio and for the most part right in the mid 30s, maybe a little bit closer to freezing in parts of the hill country. Some some of the neighborhoods and nooks and crannies, but for the most part mid 30s in the morning and then mid 60s by Saturday afternoon. So here in San Antonio 36 at sunrise 67 for the afternoon high bright sunshine, just the height and wispy clouds. A little bit warmer Sunday morning, 46 degrees, then near 70 by the afternoon. Monday will be in the 70s with sunshine and even closer to 80 degrees toward the middle of next week. And by Wednesday, something to note is that you'll actually notice some humidity back in the air, something we haven't felt for a while. And that humidity could lead to a few showers by Thursday and Friday as the next cold front approaches us about this time next week. Just because you see something trending online doesn't mean it's accurate. At the end of every week, the Associated Press puts together a roundup of some of the most popular but completely untrue stories and images of the past several days. Let's take a look. The first claim we are fact checking tonight, a young man pictured in photos with prominent Democrats, including former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and presidential candidate Elizabeth Warren is the whistleblower whose complaint sparked the presidential impeachment inquiry. But this is false. The man in those photos is Alex Soros, the son of billionaire philanthropist George Soros. He is not the anonymous whistleblower. Here's another one up tonight. The city of Dallas opened up a convention center for people seeking shelter from the cold and then police arrested people with unpaid tickets who tried to enter. Here are the facts on this. The Dallas Police Department told the AP that no arrests were made for parking tickets or nonviolent offenses, but for everyone's safety, everyone who entered the shelter was notified they were subject to checks for registered sex offenders. If anyone had active warrants for sex offenses, serious felonies and violent crimes, they were subject to arrest. The department says 11 arrests were made. The last claim we're fact checking tonight video shows sanitation trucks surrounding Madison Square in New York to protect President Donald Trump from booing protesters. But the trucks were lined up around where the president spoke on Veterans Day. However, they were there for security purposes. This is common for events that draw large crowds. After the break, Steve Spreester joining us for an all new edition of Spree Thoughts. So it could get a little bit hairy. We'll be back in just a minute. Oh, it's going to get hairy. <laughs> Of a hiatus, my six o'clock co anchor Steve Spreester is back tonight on the news at nine with a brand new edition of Spree Thoughts. And he's got his game face or whiskers or or whatever on, yeah, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> and that's what we're going to talk about tonight, Myra. I and my KSAT beard bros are growing our beards for No Shave November to promote male health and fight cancer. But growing a beard can get hairy and itchy. That's mm. kind of where I am right now. <laughs> so bear with me. Remember the group Wham and lead singer George Michael? Yes. He had a nice beard. Mm -hmm. I never saw him itching it. No. He was well groomed. So tonight I take on a beard mentor with George Michael and Wham in mind. It's not wake me up before you go go. I'm worried about careless whiskers. <laughs> Happy Friday. You may have heard of rooftop weather. Well, tonight we have rooftop whiskers. Jordan. Ashley joining me. All things whiskery. I'm almost two weeks in. Jordan is about seven months. Seven months <laughs> in. Look at this thing. Bet it's got a life of its own. Does it have its own name? Uh, Jordan Jr. <laughs> Talk about the basics of growing a beard. Um, what do I need to know? Because I'm I'm right at the itchy part. Well, 
key is not washing it every day. Not washing it every yeah, day. Yeah, you don't want to wash it every day. It'll dry out your beard. It'll uh, irritate your skin. Uh, so I usually recommend every other day um, getting a good beard oil. Even with yours that short, I would still apply oil. Just work it in there. Okay. and it'll help, especially with the itchiness. This weekend we're doing our beard competition and mustache competition to benefit the Mo Movember Foundation. This is one of our prizes. We have six different categories. Um, there's gonna be a first place, second place, and third place for every single category. Our first place winners get this cool trophy. Um, awesome. This one is actually for the styled mustache, which, which, which is one of our more popular ones. The styled mustache, the long beard, uh, we have short beard, we have the ladies creative, we have a freestyle category, and then this year we added the Movember category. So someone like you, um, that you're growing it just for the month, you still have a chance to win something. Really? Yeah. I could be a winner. You, you hear you that? Could. <laughs> At the end of November last year, Ash was actually the one that shaved my beard. Do you yeah, remember that? I do. I think it was a little traumatic for you. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, what was, it wasn't traumatic until you told me it was your first time getting shaved. <laughs> by someone other than you. And that's why I was like, oh man, last year we were able to raise $1,000 and Diesel matched it. So we were able to donate $2,000 to the Movember Foundation. This year we're hoping to raise more, so. Awesome. Um, and it's at Alamo, uh, yeah, Alamo Brewery? It's at the Alamo Beer Brew, uh, Company, the yeah. brewery right downtown. Um, we have these shirts, like the shirts Jordan's wearing. These are gonna be uh, on sale at the competition. Whatever we raise from these, these are gonna be donated to the Movember Foundation as well. Um, so we're hoping to have a lot of fun and raise money for a good cause. Awesome. All right, the Beard and Mustache competition tomorrow night, 9 o'clock at the Alamo Brewery on the east side. They gave me a t-shirt. <laughs> no, I will not be taking part, but it does go to a great cause. Oh, you don't want to put those whiskers to the test. Yeah, no. Maybe They're, we should have I'm a competition around here. I think I'm, I think I'm testing enough people <laughs> with these whiskers. <laughs> yeah, no matter how you feel about the uh, hairy fellas around KSAT, this is all for a great cause. People still have a chance to donate and help out if they want to. Yeah, you can help at a No Shave November efforts on our website, KSAT.com. And before we go, okay, I want to. this is the page where you can find it. Grow facial hair for a good cause. Uh, you can donate on this page itself. We're hoping to raise $5,000. Hopefully we can do it. And also, so my mentor, Jordan, okay. gave me beard balm. I've never tried that before. And a couple Have different like, yet? yeah, I haven't. I know it's hard to believe, but okay. So <laughs> then he also gave me some grooming oils, some beard oils. This one's called Lumberjack. Okay. This one is called Orange Crush. Mm. So I'm curious. You feel you're more of an orange crush than lumberjack kind of guy? Uh, <laughs> All right, a, a live do you smell application. That? Do you smell that? I do, yes. It smells Very like citrusy. orange crush soda. Mm -hmm. Now I want an orange crush soda. Yeah, well, you're, you got one pretty close. See, right I now. think we have really broken another barrier here at the nine o'clock. I think we have. I think we have. That's what it's all about yes. uh, during these spree thoughts. We've broken a beard barrier. Constantly pushing the envelope. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And you never know what's inside it. That's that's the tricky part. Indeed. All right. So we are, are we still planning a group shave at the yes. end of No Shave November? Okay, because yes. that was one of my favorite parts yes. last year. 9 a.m. on the 9 a.m. show, we'll do a beer <laughs> shave. All right. Go donate at KSAT.com if you're interested. Help out all these hairy fellas. We'll Please. be right back. A former ambassador to Ukraine, Marie Ivanovich, says she felt threatened by President Donald Trump. That's just one revelation from the historic public hearing, says the House conducts an impeachment inquiry. Ivanovich says that she was stunned after the transcript of the call between President Trump and the president of Ukraine revealed the two leaders tarnishing her reputation. President Trump removed the career diplomat from her post. Shocked and devastated that um, I would feature in a phone call between two heads of state uh, in such a manner. Democrats said her ouster set the stage for the president and his allies to push Ukraine to investigate Joe Biden and his son. Republicans argued the president was in the right to recall a sitting ambassador.
Let's turn now to some of tonight's top stories. United Airlines is removing the grounded Boeing 737 MAX from its schedule until March 4th. That's two months later than planned. United joins American and Southwest in extending those cancellations. All MAX planes have been grounded since March after crashes in Indonesia and Ethiopia killed 346 people. This year's flu season is getting an early start. That's according to experts at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. They say 30 states are already recording flu activity, including right here in Texas. And for the first of the year, for first time this year rather, that's the highest number they've seen in decades. The CDC says it's more important than ever to get your flu shot. Apple has removed 181 vaping related apps from its mobile app store globally to discourage the use of e-cigarettes. The company says the apps represented less than 1% of 1.8 million available. Back in June, Apple banned the promotion of vaping products in its app store. This comes after more than 2,100 cases of vaping related lung injury have been reported across the country. There have been 42 deaths tied to vaping as of November 13th. Here at home, for the first time in 50 years, religious leaders are coming together to help bring down the homeless population in San Antonio. 35 leaders joined the Interfaith San Antonio Alliance today. An initiative the ISAA is working on right now is to improve the availability of affordable housing. Mayor Ron Nirenberg says the focus is on some of the root causes of homelessness, mental health, addiction, and domestic violence but also work on the housing affordability pipeline to ensure that people uh, are not, uh, you know, are not being forced out on the streets simply because they can't afford their rent or their mortgage. Reports show that 19% of all San Antonio residents live at or below the poverty line. Last month, we shared a compelling case at 12 special telling the stories of people who live on the streets of San Antonio. That special was called In the Shadows. If you missed it, you can watch that entire hour on our website right now. Just go to ksat.com slash homeless. We have come to the end of another long week full of some big local headlines from explosions at a San Marcos food truck park to the end of an iconic era for the San Antonio Spurs. Here's a look back at the week in 210. A propane gas leak blamed for two explosions at a food truck park in San Marcos. Fire investigators say that gas leak set off the first explosion after coming into contact with an unspecified ignition source. About 20 minutes later, a second explosion was caused after a propane bottle overheated due to the fire from the first explosion. No one was hurt and no criminal activity is suspected. Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar announced this week that the jail is back in compliance. That's after passing a surprise inspection from the Texas Commission on Jail Standards. This comes after months of changes. Earlier this year, the jail failed inspection over issues with inmate intake, release, classification, health services, supervision, and sanitation. It was the first failed score since 2009. The next inspection is in February. Animal Care Services says the city of San Antonio is experiencing an outbreak of canine distemper. It's a disease that impacts a dog's breathing, stomach, and nerves. Symptoms include fever, nose discharge, and coughing, just to name a few. If you own a dog or a cat, make sure that those animals are vaccinated appropriately. ACS says the disease is not a danger to humans or other pets. Dockless scooter and rideshare company Lyft is removing its scooters from San Antonio and withdrawing its proposal to operate in the city. This comes after city staff recommended Lyft be one of three scooter operators allowed. The city says staff members will continue to negotiate with other two operators, Lime and Razor, and they will revise their recommendation to city council. Again. 
At the end of an era, the Spurs retire Tony Parker's number nine jersey on Monday. The jersey was raised to the AT&T Center rafters and placed alongside his former teammates, Tim Duncan and Manu Ginobili. The emotional ceremony featured several speeches and a look back at Parker's career. The Week in 210 and Spree Thoughts, just two of the series that we feature exclusively here on the News at 9. Here's a look at the others that we have. Be sure to tune in on Monday night for some life advice and an all-new adulting hack. What's trending tonight on KSAT.com? Let's find out with Ivan Herrera. Myra, all right, thank you for having me. Happy Friday. Yes, happy Friday. Yes, all right, three great trending stories for you today. First up, Santicos is opening their 10th theater here in San Antonio. All right. And that's going to be happening at uh, far northwest side near I-10 and Bernie Stage Road. So for those folks who don't have anything real close by, um, that's a that's a place to go, but it's not happening till 2021. So ah. you've got to wait a little bit. Okay. Um, so it's going to be um, housed in the Bernie Stage Crossing Shopping Center, and the theater is going to have 10 to 12 auditoriums and some of those big picture ones, those really large format pictures. They're going to have a few of those. I actually was just out I-10 towards that area today. It is growing like crazy. A lot, yeah. And there's so much traffic over there. Yes, that is so, very true. <laughs> the location will also have a high energy bar and an arcade, and of course. Santicos leaving us, leaving us with more with an 11th theater that they're teasing. Uh -huh. They still haven't announced where it's going to happen, but an 11th theater is coming. Okay. More on KSAT.com for that one. All right, next up, do you want to build a snowman? Aww. I do, but it's too hot here in San Antonio. <laughs> so I'll settle for Frozen 2, which is coming out in less than a week. Can you believe that? I can't, I can't even remember when the first one came out, and I'm just like excited about uh, it. You can't, yeah, yeah, I know. It's been, yeah. I'm really excited. So it's gone crazy. If you want to get a head start and learn all the songs and annoy your parents, <laughs> um, we have a playlist to the Frozen 2 soundtrack right now on KSAT. KSAT.com. Just learn all the songs before you get there and then sing along while you're at the movie. Just get a head start. I heard somebody saying in here the other day they already had tickets to Frozen Oh my too. gosh, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. So Kristen Bell, who plays Anna, and Josh Gad, who plays Olaf the Snowman, actually discussed and even apologized to parents everywhere about the infectious <laughs> music that's hitting the airwaves with the movie. So just expect it, okay? Will this replace Let It Go? That's what I'm curious I, about. I hope not, because I, I really love that song. <laughs> uh, so right now on KZ.com, listen to that playlist, and that's, that's all for that. And finally, here are some tips, or, oh, not the tips. Here are the seven things to do this weekend in San Antonio. I'm going to tell you about a few of them. Okay. So on Saturday at the Maestro Entrepreneur Center, there's going to be a Concha Throwdown, which sounds really oh, exciting to me. we have talked about that here before. Yes. I can't believe that's this weekend. Okay. Yes, I'm really excited about it. Judges are going to decide who has the best pan dulce in San Antonio. <laughs> the event's going to have an art show as well. It's free to attend, but the parking is five bucks. Do they need volunteer judges? Uh, I'd like to be one. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you're not into conchas, maybe you're into tamales and chicharrones. Uh, maybe you're into tamales and chicharrones at the Ch Tamale and Chicharron Fest on Saturday at the R&J Pavilion starting at 2 p.m. Okay. That event's going to have food, music, arts and crafts, and a lot more fun. Nice. So, and the last one I want to tell you about is the Breakfast with Santa, and that's happening at South Park Mall. The first 150 kids will get a free Chick-fil-A uh, kids meal, and that's going to be happening at the food court Saturday from 9 to 10. And go out and meet Santa. All right. Yeah. So, we got plenty of options, a and lot you should not happening. be hungry yes. this weekend yes. at all. Way more events on KSAT.com, and that's all I have for you today. Thank all you right. for having me. <laughs> Thanks, Ivan. We'll be back. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar. 
The Google antitrust investigation is reportedly getting even bigger. CNBC reporting that the state attorneys general are expanding their probe to include a deeper look into Google's search and Android businesses. Previously, the investigation had just been focused on its advertising business. And Airbus is pulling the plug on its super jumbo A380 jet after it was unable to turn a profit through sales. The company is hoping to give the A380 a second life on the used market, but will stop building new ones after 2021. And Under Armour's accounting practices are under scrutiny. To meet sales targets, company executives said they would regularly redirect goods to off-price vendors, booking more sales. The company is under federal investigation for those practices, and those tactics, however, are not considered to be illegal. And that's your Cheddar Business and Tech Update. I'm Kristen Schiller from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Hi, happy Friday. I'm squinting because I don't know what the big yellow ball in the sky is. Oh, it's the sun. We just haven't seen it in like four days. There's a lot of tension, especially on the internet, about like doing Christmas stuff before Thanksgiving and all the pro-turkey people are like, no, you will respect the turkey. Look at these drinks. Aren't they neat? Limited edition holiday colas. That's gonna really upset some of y'all, cola. <laughs> This doesn't uh, pull me one way or the other. It's kind of nice because you're like, oh, Coke, and then it's like cinnamon. Your weekend forecast, it's gonna be pretty cold early Saturday morning. Our morning lows will be in the mid 30s, but we'll be in the 60s by the afternoon with some high thin clouds in the sky. More cloud cover on Sunday, high temperatures in the afternoon back in the 60s. Thanks to Twitter friend Joshua Avalar for suggesting we parkour at the Tea Gardens today. Parkour. Mm. Have a great weekend. That is all our time here on the News at 9. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you right back here next week. Have a great weekend.